Okay, so long story short, this is the Hasu USB to USB controller converter. You can use it to convert almost any USB keyboard into a fully programmable keyboard using TMK or QMK. So, keyboard nerds, yes, this thing is every bit as awesome as it sounds. There are a few limitations, but overall, it's great. So if you want to buy or build one of these, you should. It has the Terran seal of approval. Even the keyboard's RGB still works normally. As for me, I use three of them to give myself three additional pure macro keyboards. No biggie. Okay, that's all folks. See you next time when I'll be discussing five reasons why you might want to inject an RFID chip into your ass. Oh, sorry, did you guys want more of an explanation than that? Fine, stick around. The Marlin screwdriver set from iFixit features five specialty precision screwdrivers. Check it out today at ifixit.com forward slash Linus. Okay, so before I explain this thing, let me address a question that I get so very often. Taryn, do you really need so many keyboards? Can't you just use multiple macro layers on one keyboard? Let me answer your question with a question. When you board an airplane, do you peek inside the cockpit and ask the pilot, do you really need so many switches and buttons? A single keyboard and mouse works fine for Microsoft Flight Simulator. In both cases, the answer is the same. Having all of your controls laid out like this as a single layer of dedicated keys with everything clearly labeled means that you can work more quickly and more accurately. It just requires more physical space. So check this out. On the left, I'm using dedicated macro keys to view the production calendar, go to the graphics folder of my current project, to switch to Premiere, to add a specific effect, and to insert a specific sound. On the right, I'm doing the same thing manually without macro keys. It uh, takes a lot longer. <clears throat> Those seconds really add up. Can we fast forward this a little bit? Okay, okay, thank you. Anyway, there are a lot of jobs that use specialized hardware. Just because I had to build and program my own cockpit doesn't mean it was a waste of time. Okay, so now that we've established why someone might want a dedicated macro keyboard, let's examine our options and whoa! Oh, there's actually quite a few, each with varying levels of difficulty, stability, functionality, and price. If only someone could sort through all this stuff and tell us which one is best for most people. So in third place is the Corsair K55. At just $50, this is the cheapest of their offerings that still supports IQ, Corsair's easy to use software that allows for every key of a supported keyboard to be reprogrammed. With IQ, you can create normal macros, or because it supports F13 to F24, you can use this profile and this always running auto hotkey script to call powerful functions with parameters like the ones I demonstrated earlier. If that sounds pretty cool, make sure you check out my full instructional video linked in the description below before buying a K55. In second place for $60, we've got the Razer Cyanosa Chroma. Huh. This is my list and this still surprised me. I've always found Razer Synapse really annoying to use, but one of its best features is that it can distinguish between multiple keyboards. And although it does not support F13 to F24, you can directly launch any file from any key, which includes auto hotkey scripts. That is incredibly useful. Oh, and for your extra 10 bucks, you also get per key RGB lighting. Honestly, the Cyanosa Chroma is such a great deal for a pure macro keyboard that I suspect for most of you, it'll be more than enough. So if you wanna go this route, the Razer profile, all the auto hotkey code, and my instructional video can again be found in this video's description. Finally, in first place, for just $63 from oneupkeyboards.com, you can get the Hasu USB converter, or as I call it, the ultimate macro device. This is the cheapest 
and easiest way that I have found to get the awesome functionality of TMK or QMK onto almost any USB keyboard. And that's a really big deal because boutique TMK and QMK keyboards usually cost over 100 US dollars altogether. That one that Linus and Anthony built was about 220 bucks for the board plate, case, switches, and keycaps. And in fact, the very cheapest fully assembled TMK keyboard that I was able to find is this one with only 68 keys for $100. So on a dollar per macro key basis, the keyboard converter is way out ahead of that, even when you factor in having to get a cheap keyboard to go with it. This one's like $15, so whatever. But who cares about TMK and QMK anyway? And what on earth are they? I'm glad you asked. They are open source keyboard firmwares that are designed for specific hardware, like the Teensy and the Prionic PCB. And while I had always thought of these custom keyboards as a toy for people with too much money and no knowledge of auto hotkey, as it turns out, only some of that is true. Seriously though, there's a lot of cool stuff in here that will really appeal to a certain kind of nerd, especially the programmers. It's got macros, layers, and RGB support, of course, but there's also special stuff like Space Cadet Shift, which uses your shift keys as parentheses if you just tap them, Unicode support, which does exactly what you'd expect, and Tap Dance, which will call different functions from the same key depending upon how many times you tap it. Okay, so to get this working, First, you need a hex file. The easiest way to get one is to use this online tool, but don't bother because it doesn't give you access to most of the cool stuff that TMK or QMK is capable of. So the better way to do this is to set up a Linux environment in Windows, install Git, and then download the entire QMK repository. It's easy. Then you'll be ready to use a text editor to modify the appropriate keymap.c file and maybe config.h, launch Ubuntu, CD over to our QMK firmware folder, and sudo make ourselves a hex file. Now, I have a full tutorial video for that too. It's linked below. But don't worry, you don't have to do any of that stuff because you can find several hex files that I already created for you on my GitHub also linked below. I recommend f24.hex, but if you want control, shift, and alt to still work normally, use f24 with modifiers.hex. Bringing us finally to how you actually get this thing working. Download, install, and open QMK Toolbox. Then just plug in your USB converter by itself with no keyboard attached and hit the little button. Locate your hex file and hit flash to flash it onto the firmware. Then unplug the converter and you're done. Just remember that every time you use the converter, you need to plug it in by itself and then plug in your keyboard to the back or it won't work. And sometimes you might have to re-plug it in after a computer restart, which is pretty annoying. Now, if you were to go and type into a text document at this stage, you'd probably notice that it's still sending normal keystrokes, except the caps lock doesn't work. So what gives? Well, I lied earlier, you're not quite done yet. Next, you'll need to download and install AutoHotKey. Then go to this link and download this AutoHotKey script by clicking RAW and Control S to save. Create this exact folder structure and save it here. Delete the stupid .txt if it appears. Now double click on it to get it running. A friendly icon should appear in your taskbar. Now try typing into a text document. Instead of text, you should be seeing tooltips, no matter which key you press. Perfect. After this point, it's up to you. All you have to do is replace those tooltips with literally any script you want. You can do anything that AutoHotKey can do, which is a lot. Oh, I probably should have mentioned that you should already know how to use AutoHotKey before you add a second keyboard. So if you're new, this is a great tutorial to get you started. Also, I strongly recommend that you place a shortcut to the script file into your startup folder like so. But why do it this way? Why not just create the macros inside of QMK? Well, because AutoHotKey can do a thousand times as much stuff. 
So for my purposes, I just needed a way for my QMK keyboard to call any of the functions that I'd already written in auto hotkey. And because I couldn't figure out how to send PS2 set one make scan codes or raw USB keyboard HID codes, I had to go with my usual method of using F24 as an extra modifier key. I call this wrapping a keystroke. Then I use this single line in auto hotkey to block those wrapped keystrokes and replace them with whatever I want. But a few keys don't play nicely with this method, namely caps lock, num lock, shift control, alt, win, apps, and pause break. So before wrapping them, I replaced them with little known keys like language, international, and the Brazilian comma. And that's it. I'm done. For three years, I've been looking for a cheap but stable way to do all of this. And the Hasu USB to USB keyboard converter checks all the boxes. Even compatibility is a strong point for it. It worked with every single keyboard and numpad that I tried. And after two other converters, I was even able to convert a Model M into a QMK macro board. It's not like I'd recommend it for this purpose, but still, it works with the Model M. Now, some of you might have noticed that asterisk before. There is a cheaper way to do this. Open up your keyboard, remove the logic board, replace it with a teensy, rewire everything, and pray you didn't make a mistake. This is less expensive than the Hasu USB converter, but this is much easier. You know what else is easy? Ting. They are the mobile carrier that is focused on customer service and customer satisfaction first. When you call Ting, you don't speak to a robot, you get put directly through to a person. With Ting, you pay only for what you use, with the average bill being only 23 bucks a month per device. And if you're stuck in a contract and want to switch to Ting, they'll cover 25% of your cancellation fee up to $75. Head on over to linus2018.ting.com and try out their savings calculator. They've lowered their mobile data rates, and now data is just 10 bucks per gigabyte beyond the second gig, and every single Ting customer will be able to reap the benefits of that change. Get 25 bucks off your bill or $25 off a new phone at the Ting shop at linus2018.ting.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Oh, you can watch my original video about Lua macros, but don't bother because this video makes it obsolete. Look at all these second keyboard pictures that people have sent me since then. Anyway, buy some merch, join the forum, and subscribe to PewDiePie.